This podcast is brought to you by Most Valuable Podcasts, leading the league in podcasting entertainment. What's up, what's up, everybody? Ricky Whitmer here, along with the one, the only, Fred Swanson. Hey, hey, hey. And we are back. I can say we're back. And if you're listening to this after the Brewer segment, it's the same intro. We're doing it both because these are two independent videos. Doing a little bit more baseball this week. Doing two topics instead of one topic. If you haven't checked out the U Darvis Brewer video, go ahead, check that out. I don't know which one of these is going to be coming out first, but check out the other video. But in this one, we're talking about J.D. Martinez and the Boston Red Sox. And the the title of our video, Brandon, is Will J.D. Martinez Sign with the Red Sox? But I'm going to ask you a better question because I like the way that ESPN phrased it. I just didn't want to steal exactly from them, but I like the cut of their jib. Are the Red Sox going to sign J.D. Martinez or what? <laughs> I know. Like, come on. Like, I are know. they going to sign him or what? What do you think? I, I think they will. I think the Boston Red Sox will end up working out something for J.D. Martinez. And the reason that I say that is because the look at what look at what happened to, to Boston in this last playoff run. Mm-hmm. It didn't go too far. And a guy like J.D. Martinez and what he did, what he's just done, what he's done for the Tigers when he was with them, and then what he did when he was with the Tigers last year for half the season, and then what he did when he went over to Arizona. With the D-backs. The guy was unstoppable. He was hitting home runs left and right like it was his job. I mean, four home run night, I, I think I think he had at least one of those, or at least it felt like it. Mm-hmm. I mean, this guy ended up cracking out 45 home runs on the season, over 100 RBIs, I think 106. He was good, and he is good, and he's very, very good. And people know he's good, not only because they've watched him, but because Scott Boris is his agent and is telling everyone how good he is mm-hmm. and hyping him up. So this is this is something I think needs to get done. And the reason why I think it needs to get done is because it is something that Boston needs to help propel them to another World Series. They need another power bat. They need another guy in their lineup who is dangerous, who can hit, who is not going to necessarily, well, you hope that's not necessarily going to go cold um, in the in the playoffs when you need them most, which is something that J.D. Martinez kind of showed that he's he's able to keep going um, you know, when it comes to when it comes to playoff time as well with Arizona. Mm-hmm. They, they didn't um, you know, they didn't get there, but I mean, they got there, but they didn't. Well, get they to got the, swept by the Dodgers. Exactly, they didn't. They, they didn't got end owned up. by like the Dodgers. The one thing I didn't mention the U Darvish one was the Dodgers won six of their first six playoff games. Yeah, the D backs didn't like the D backs might have been in some of those games, but they got swept. A- exactly, they pull they, out the brooms. They we're weren't able. They weren't able to do it. I mean, they were able mm-hmm. to beat Colorado to get there, but then, you know, they, they met the Dodgers. But I think that this is this is how this deal has to go, and it's and it's with. And it's with it's based on money and years and everything like that. And you look at Jacoby Ellsbury, and he was 30 years old when uh, he negotiated a seven-year deal with the Yankees back in 2013, 2014. JD Martinez is the same age at 30 years old. Mm-hmm. And what Scott Boris was able to do is he was able to get Jacoby Ellsbury for seven years, and then he was able to get another seven-year deal, um, Shinsu Chu at age 31. And then a nine-year deal, Prince Fielder, with Detroit back in 2012 as well. And Prince Prince Fielder in Detroit, pretty good. Pretty good hitter. Shin Su Chu did pretty good things for for Cleveland, Cleveland I think, was it? Or was it? Was it the seven? The deal was maybe not with Cleveland. It may have been with Texas at the time, mm-hmm. 2013, 2014. Yeah. But he can do this. So he's able to do deals like this. And that's why I have the confidence this deal gets done. I think Boston, though, is worried. They don't want to, they want Martinez badly. Mm-hmm. They want Martinez badly. Like you want that one last beer at the bar. Even though you don't need it, you do want it. They want Martinez very, very badly in, 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 in this one. But they don't want to get burned like they have in a couple of deals recently. Pablo Sandoval was a terrible deal. Mm-hmm. Carl Crawford, that one never 
never panned out either. And that one was a seven-year, one hundred and forty-two million. Sandoval was a five-year, ninety-five million. But they 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 do they need Martinez in their lineup. And what ESPN shows is a quick look at how the lineup could go with Betts leading off, followed by Benintendi. Martinez would be slotted in at the three spot as mm-hmm. a DH. Rafael Devers, Hanley Ramirez or Moreland at first base, Bogart's the shortstop, then Pedroia, then Vasquez or Sandy Leon, and then Jackie Bradley Jr. I love what it says under that lineup. You want to go ahead and read that? Without Martinez, well, good luck. Well, And that's <laughs> why I'm on the side of go and get your guy because let's be completely honest. The DH spot for the Red Sox is not as sured up as it used to be. It used to be, we don't got to worry about the DH spot. You want to know why? Big Poppy's here. Big Poppy going to knock in some home runs. However, Big Poppy no longer here. You ain't got that Big Poppy to hit it over and how that ba- right field and how wall. And badly, how badly did Boston feel the effects of that last year? Well, and that's what I was going to get to. You look at just the series against the Astros. You Yeah, part of it was your starting pitching let the Astros out of the gate early where it was... You're down four to two after four in game one. You end up losing eight to two. Your offense doesn't do anything against Verlander. The next game, you lose eight to two. You're down four to one after three. Doesn't help when Pom- Pomeranz didn't have a good game. The offense only scores two. Then your bats wake up because you're at home. You win 10 to three and you dominate Houston. However, it was a little bit too late because then in that last game four, that was the one where Boston, it's like, okay, we're down 2-1, but then in the fifth they get two runs. Okay, we're up 3-2. to two. Then it was the eighth and the ninth inning that killed the Red Sox as two runs they give up in the eighth. They give up a run in the ninth. They're down 5-3. Uh, to three. Yeah, you get one in the ninth, but you're not able to do anything with it. I think with... I. I know it's not like, oh, infuse one player. I think it would have helped your offense more if you had a guy like JT Martinez. However, the one thing you can't say is, oh, that DH spot was really lacking because Hanley Ramirez did show up. Like, there was one game he was 0 for 3, but then in one game he was 4 for 4, another game he was 2 for 3. Wasn't terrible in the DH spot in that series, but a JD Martinez would have been a better power option. At the DH spot. And when you look at a season, when you look at a season as a whole, J.D. Mm-hmm. Martinez is going to be better. Hanley Ramirez yeah. has become so inconsistent, you can't count on him. You really can't like count said, on him four too for much. 4 for 4, 0 for 3 in a matter of Game 2 to Game 3. And I get that that happens. I get that that happens sometimes, depending, especially depending on the pitcher that you're going up against. I mean, Pedroia I mean, in the last game went 0 for 5. So it, it, so it does happen, but yeah. I think when you look at a season as a whole— J.D. Martinez is going to be much more consistent and I think give you a lot more production mm-hmm. than Hanley Ramirez is going to be able to. And Hanley Ramirez, in my opinion, he's on, his de- he's on the decline, whereas, whereas J.D. Martinez, he does not look like he's slowing down anytime soon. And last season was a perfect example of that, where he got traded to Arizona and he just kept going and going and going and then just mm-hmm. broke through the ceiling and just kept going. So I, I, I think that... Boston Boston needs this guy. No, they do. Boston needs this guy to get over the hump, to be able to fill that role that Big Poppy had of their big power threat, their big power hitter in the clutch. And that's another thing that Martinez was able to do. Clutch hitting was one of his biggest strengths last mm-hmm. season, and especially for Arizona. Didn't need to be clutch for Detroit because there was nothing to be clutch for. They sucked. But for Arizona, there was a lot of clutch games that you were able to have. They beat, the, they, they whooped up on the Dodgers mm-hmm. in a series in Arizona during the regular season. And then all of a sudden, they couldn't play them yeah. when it came to the playoffs. Here's what I think, and this might be me being overreactionary like I usually am. However, if the Red Sox don't get J.D. Martinez, the Yankees are for sure going to win the AL East this year. Like, that to me is also a thing that this does. By getting Martinez and adding that to your lineup all regular season, you can fend off and kind of fence with the New York Yankees. They were a team that only finished two behind you guys last year. Two behind you guys I know you guys hate the Yankees. You probably hate that I brought them up. But if you have a guy like J.D. Martinez that can help you make sure you win the East 
rather than having to play in the wild card game because the Yankees with all their additions and their players just getting better, their young guys getting better, that they don't take the division from you. So you're almost saying, I, the Yankees, I, I see your Giancarlo Stanton mm-hmm. and I raise you a J.D. Exactly. Martinez. And I think that that's, uh-huh. I think that's a great point to bring up and because the Boston needs to remember that they're not just doing it for them for, for, for them to get better, but they're doing it so they can, can get better to beat the Yankees mm-hmm. and to compete against the Yankees and try and – and that's one thing that they always have to remember – you know they 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 they're a solid team. They're a solid club. Boston is. They're actually they're great. They're very very good. But the Yankees are also great and getting better. So mm-hmm. and 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 you said that with their with their young guys. When their young guys are no longer necessarily young guys, they're still young, but they're now young, experienced guys. That's what makes it even more dangerous to play them. And and you're right. They're they're right there. They're moving along. They've they've got guys now, young guys who have gotten a, a year, couple of years under their belt, and they're starting to feel pretty good about playing there in New York. And now Boston needs to be able to do the same type of thing in terms of their young guys that they have. And then bringing in some other guys who are some some veterans who've been playing for a little bit, who are able. And when I say veterans, I don't, I mm-hmm. wouldn't look at JD Martinez as in uh, he's not an old veteran. He's just a guy who's been who's been around for, a, for a, a couple rook. of years, and he's he's played well. And he's also he he can play the DH spot. He can play right field for you. He can play the outfield. He can hit dingers. He is a very very good fielder, and he's a really good right fielder. His defense is very good. I can tell you because watching a number of White Sox games, I got really pissed at J.D. Martinez and swore at him multiple times because he was that good. So I, I think that it's one of those things where Boston, they need to, they just, they they honestly, they just need to crack. They need to crack and they need to cave and they need to say, okay, we'll do it. And there's been talks that maybe they would shift and pivot and mm-hmm. go towards go towards a pitching market. That makes no sense to me. Makes no sense to me. Yes, you may have a couple of guys who are free agents at the end of the season, but you don't want to look, okay, well, what are we going to do after this season? You want to look for this season because you want to get back to the World Series as exactly. quickly as you can, and getting J.D. Martinez now can help you. You know what? When it comes to year-wise with how many years he's played at the major league level, you know what kind of a veteran, and this is, take this with a grain of salt because the guy I'm going to bring up is up here just because of what he is to the team I'm going to mention. He's an Anthony Rizzo type of vet. Anthony Rizzo... 2011 to 2017, J.D. Martinez, 2011 to 2017. Played the same amount of years. So although Anthony Rizzo is the leader of the Cubs and he's the emotional leader of the Cubs, J.D. Martinez, when it comes to years played in the league, could be that kind of a veteran, a guy who's been around just as long as Anthony Rizzo. And Anthony Rizzo is a guy that is respected in the Cubs organization as a leader. One other thing I want to bring up, and this is another thing, yeah, you got to fend off the Yankees, However, one team that could be making a surge this year, especially for a wild card, is the Angels. Let's say you lose to the Yankees, then you have to fend off, to me, the Angels, because I don't know how to take this, if it's going to be a really good thing for the Angels, or it's going to be an interesting experiment. But when they got Shoni Otani, the guy who, hey, I'm going to pitch one day, and then the rest I'm going to play in the field. Like, it's going to be interesting to see how that works, but even if he's just a pitcher or just a DH, it's going to help the a- help the Angels out, who are only five games behind the Twins, who were the second wild card team. It's an interesting point to bring up because that's that's another thing is it's not then just the Yankees. It's okay now you've now you've let's say you've gotten your Boston, you've gotten past the they Yankees. They got Zach Cohart or Cozart too, and you. You now are moving into playing against teams to to go into the playoffs. You've got a, a one game playoff. Mm-hmm. Who's going to help get you over that edge? Who do you want to have in your lineup, and who mm-hmm. do you not want to be missing if you had the chance? Mm-hmm. And that's that's JD Martinez when it comes down to it and you're looking at it. And I now know some of you may be watching this video and saying, Brandon, Ricky, you're you're only talking about him going to the Red Sox. What about the Diamondbacks? Because they're a team that's rumored to be in on him. 
Diamondbacks don't have the money. I'd they, avoid. They, uh, they, if I'm JD, I stay they, away from the D-backs. They, they don't have the money because Zach Greinke's contract is mm-hmm. so huge. Unless they're able to dump that contract, Ricky, I don't think that there's any way that they could offer him the money that Boston's able to offer him. Boston would be comfortable offering him that money. Mm-hmm. I don't think that if the, if the Diamondbacks offered him that money, they would be so constrained they wouldn't be able to do much else. I if I'm JD Martinez, I avoid the Diamondbacks like the plague, and I'm sorry, D back fans, but when it comes to the Diamondbacks, let's say you're in the same position, you're a wild card team. I don't think you're gonna overtake the Dodgers in the division. I don't think you beat the Dodgers in a best of five or best of seven. I don't think you beat the Cubs in a best of five or a best of seven. I don't think you beat the Nationals in a best of five or a best of seven. Like the Nationals almost beat the Cubs in a best of five. That's how close that first divisional round series was for the Cubs and the Nationals. I just, I think that the competition for the Diamondbacks between the teams they could see in the playoffs is a lot worse than the Red Sox. Because I think the Red Sox, even if you go up against an Indians, you go up against the Yankees, you go up against probably the Astros right now are the only team where it's like, you might not have a chance, only because of what they've added in Garrett Cole to that already stacked team that beat you last season and won the World Series. I think the odds of winning the World Series, although it's not 100%, are better with Boston, and that's why I would choose Boston over the Diamondbacks, but the whole contract thing doesn't help either. No, it certainly doesn't, but I think that you you then look at the Diamondbacks and Mm -hmm. you look at them without J.D. Martinez, they're a completely different team. Mm -hmm. They're a completely different team because I think when Martinez went there, how many home runs did he hit just for them by being there? 25 or or something like that? I mean, I think it was just an an outrageous number that he he hit just by being in Arizona in that second half of the season, which was crazy. So now you take him out of the outfield and you don't have his defense – out there you take away all those home runs all those runs he drove in all that production he had 45 total on the season he had 29 16 home runs. in detroit 29 in arizona 29 you take away his 29 home runs mm-hmm. arizona the diamondbacks they're still good they're still a good team but they're not as good of a team they're not as dangerous anymore i mean i'm even looking at you look at his on base percentage his on base percentage went down by about 22 um, clicks. However, his slugging percentage went from a 630 in Detroit to a 741 for the Diamondbacks last year, just in the second half of the season. I mean, he was he was raking. Mm-hmm. I mean, he was really, really, really good. He increased good. his war by a full point. He was 1.6 with the Tigers, 2.6 with the D-backs. And, and I was just going to say, you know, the Diamondbacks, they're still going to be a good team because they still they still have Jake Lamb over at third base. They mm-hmm. still have Goldie over at first. They they still have A.J. Pollock out in center field, who I think he's a great center fielder. Um, if he could get his his offensive stats up a little bit more, you, you look at the pitching rotation with Granke, Ray, Walker, Corbin. I, these, these guys are pretty good, but there's no J.D. Martinez. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that that's they'll feel that they'll feel that this year, and they won't be as good as what they were last season. They'll still be around because they're still a quality team with really good pieces, but they won't be what they were last season. And that's why I think it's with him. It's the Boston needs to look at how big how how big of an addition he was for Arizona last mm-hmm. year, and him by him being there made them a playoff team. And by him not being there now, saying that they're not a playoff team, just saying that they're going to feel the effects of him not being there. Whereas there's some guys who leave a team and you're like, ah, it sucks, but we'll be able to fill that. We'll be able to fill the role. Mm-hmm. They're not going to be able to fill this role. Yeah, they're not going to be able to do it. And Boston because needs to a look, big part of how you got to the wild card was adding him. Was adding at the him. Deadline. Yes, and Boston needs to look at that and look at how big of a difference that is and how big of a difference maker. He is, Mm -hmm. and pay the man. Final thoughts, I'll give mine first. Boston needs to sign J.D. Martinez. If they don't, Yankees win the AL East this year. 
Barring any injuries, I'm talking right now what the teams are right now. What's your final thoughts? Boston needs to sign him. It only makes sense. This is a move that they need to make. I'm surprised it's taken them this long, and, and we're and it's still taking is them, it them a while. Or is it maybe J.D. Martinez waiting for the right deal that he wants? I think it's Boston. I think it's Boston. J.D. Martinez. I think it's Boston. I think it part. I think it's part Boston and part Boris mm-hmm. because that's that's just how I think that this one. That, that's just how I think this one is going because. Um, whenever you, whenever you get into something like this, it's always going to be, uh, it's always going to be agent too. So I think that that's, I think that that's going to be, uh, one of the big things and possibly one of the holdups is that Martinez's agent is Scott Boris is trying to get as much money out of Boston as he possibly can. And, and Boston is, is, is waiting a little bit, trying to still be like, ah, well, we can just pay him. It's going to pay off in the end. Well, this is where you guys come in. Let us know what you think down below. Will Boston sign him? Will J.D. Martinez end up with the Red Sox? Or could he end up back in Arizona? Let us know what you guys think down below in the comment section.